name is Lisa Pruitt. I went to undergrad at Stanford University. I'm about to start my second year at the Princeton School of Medicine. And this past summer for SRP, I went to Accra, Ghana, and Ibadan, Nigeria to study barriers to diagnosis and treatment of breast cancer in women. So when I was interviewing for medical school, I was already pretty interested in global health, and I was particularly interested in doing interdisciplinary research between anthropology and medicine. And Pritzker was one of the places where I really felt supported in that. The first time I mentioned it, everyone was super enthusiastic, and um, in particular, we did, they did also talk about the Global Health Initiative during interview day, which was something that was very exciting to me. So breast cancer is the most common malignancy affecting women worldwide, and Nigeria has four decades of late stage presentations. So my project this summer to, was to look at cultural and social barriers to breast cancer diagnosis and treatment. So I developed a qualitative questionnaire and interview to work with, to do with breast cancer patients, physicians, and healthy community women. During five weeks, we interviewed 31 patients, 10 healthy community controls, and five physicians about what they perceived the barriers to care to be. For my summer after first year, I was really interested in working on a research project in global health that would allow me to use my anthropology background. And I approached Dr. Olapade originally to help me find other faculty who might be able to like support that type of project. But when I met with her, she was like, oh no, I have a great project that you can work on, um, and allowed me to develop a project around breast cancer, which was of interest to me. I had a background in um, gynecological cancer, so that was a very interesting project. So as background to my research in Nigeria, in Nigeria, Dr. Lapade wanted Christine and I to have a background on what oncology care looks like in Western Africa, since the U.S. isn't really a great comparison point. So we started out by spending a week in Accra, Ghana at Kolebu Teaching Hospital, which is one of the two teaching hospitals in the country. Um, during our week there, we shadowed in the radiation oncology department and in the hematology oncology department, where everyone went out of their way to make sure that we got to see unusual cases that they knew we wouldn't see in the United States. So a typical day during our research project, a fellow SRP student, Christine and I, would usually go to the department we were working in. And for example, when we were in the radiotherapy department, one of us would go on ward rounds in the morning so we'd have a chance to really be exposed to the clinical atmosphere. Um, in their unit, while the other one would work with our two translators downstairs in the clinical section of the department, and any breast cancer patients that came in after they saw the physician were able to pull them aside and interview them, both for my project on cultural barriers and Christine's project on economic barriers to care. When ward rounds were finished, the other student would join um, in with the clinical team to interview patients. For diagnosis, the most significant barrier was a lack of knowledge on the part of the women. They didn't perceive the lump they found in their breast to be a serious health concern. For treatment, the most significant barriers were system delays, such as hospital strikes and um, delayed in test results, while also a denial of their condition and a fear of surgery, specifically mastectomy, also played a significant role. So when we were done at the hospital today, all three of us were really interested in exploring everything that Ibadan had to offer, in particular the food, which is very different in Western Africa. We tried out all the small canteens um, around the campus and ate um, really interesting food, including amla, which is a starch you eat with your fingers. And we also just explored the town. We went on a day trip to Oshobo, which has one of the oldest shrines sacred shines in all of Western Africa, as well as spending our final weekend in Lagos getting to explore really sort of the heart of Nigeria in the largest city in the country. While we were able to gather really great data this summer, there's still a lot about the problem of delayed diagnosis that we weren't able to explore because of the limited time during the summer. So I'm hoping to go back next year in the month after boards before I start my third year to do some follow-up research, interview some primary care physicians about breast cancer, and be able to interview more community controls to get a bigger picture of what's actually going on with breast cancer in Nigeria. Hopefully as well, um, during my fourth year, I'll be able to go back to Ibadan to do a clinical elective. This has been a huge sort of 
piece of my Pritzker experience, global health was always something that was really important to me during medical school, and this research project has been really inspiring to me, and I'm really committed to continuing it, which will go throughout my Pritzker, my time at Pritzker, and I think it's really also enhanced my commitment to global health and my commitment to anthropology and how important this is in medicine. So I think one of the most incredible things about going to Nigeria was being able to see a healthcare in a really different setting. The first day in radiation oncology on the inpatient wards was really, really difficult just because you're in this completely different environment. The hospital is not air conditioned, it's very stuffy, there's all these people in white coats around, and you have these patients with these incredibly advanced stage diseases that you just never see in an American hospital. And one of the residents, like as we walked into the ward, was like, oh, do you know what kind of cancer this patient has? And I was like, no, how would I know? And I'm like, well, the smell. There's a very distinct smell and of this type of cancer. And I was just like, I have never like heard that before. And it turned out the woman had really advanced stage surgical can cervical cancer. And there, if you have advanced stage, there is a distinct odor that I did come to recognize during my time there. And I think, too, seeing Patients there have to pay for everything out of pocket, even gloves, syringes, anything that needs for they need for any procedure. Their relative has to go to the pharmacy and buy it and bring it before the doctors can do anything. And if they don't have the money to pay, nothing is done. And that was just a really often horrifying but striking experience. I think my biggest advice for students who want to go abroad during medical school is just once you're there to make absolutely the most of the experience that it's not just about the work that you've gone there to do, whether it's research or a clinical rotation, but it's all the things that happen outside of the hospital, the people that you meet, the crazy foods that you try, just like get out of wherever you're staying and see and do as much as you possibly can while you're there. One thing that was really interesting to see is that in a very resource limited setting and in a technology limited setting, both in Ghana and in Ibadan, um, the physicians had really developed their skills at clinical interviewing and doing a really thorough physical exam. And this was really impressive to me and inspiring because in the U.S. we learn those things but they get kind of glossed over because even if you find something on physical exam, you're always going to just well, like order a CT, order an MRI to like back up what you find. But there, these things are so expensive. If they order them, their patients won't be able to get them. So they really rely on their own examination skills. It's really, really impressive. To make this project possible, I'd really like to thank Dr. Fumio Lapade and Dr. Eugene Ray Raquel in the Department of Comparative Human Development who helped me plan my project, as well as Dr. Callender and the Pritzker School of Medicine and the Summer Research Program, as well as all of the staff at Healthy Life for All Foundation in, in Ibadan, as well as the radiotherapy and surgery departments at University College Hospital who really made my research possible.